let's add stairs, doors, and other non-block blocks to Minecraft. 121 Minecraft modding courses available down below. With over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. Alright, we found some back into other ones more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding non-block blocks to the game. Now, when I say non-block blocks... I mean, and this is going to be the exhaustive list. So the entire list of things we're going to add today is going to be uh, stairs. It's going to be custom slab. It's going to be a custom button, a custom pressure plate, a custom fence, a custom fence gate, a custom wall, a custom door, a custom trap door. Those are all the non-block blocks, as I like to call them. And the reason I call them non-block blocks is, well, I mean, they are kind of, they're, they're blocks, right? They are they do act as blocks, but they, they don't look like blocks. So therefore, they are non-block blocks. Simple as that. Now, for those, it's actually fairly straightforward. As always, of course, all of the code is linked in the description in the GitHub repository. And let's start by actually simply getting all of those blocks registered in our mod blocks class. And it's all going to start with a public static final block. And this is going to be the pink underscore garnet underscore stairs. Stairs, there you go. Equal to the register block method, passing in the name, which is going to be pink underscore garnet underscore stairs. And the second parameter is going to be a new stairs block. Passing in the first parameter here is going to be mod blocks dot pink garnet block dot get default block state. And the second parameter is going to be the settings dot create. And I'm going to do a strength of let's say two and a requires tool call. And there we go. And then we're going to duplicate some stuff. So we're going to duplicate this once. And then we have another pair of two. And then we're going to have actually not only a pair, but three of them together. And then lastly, two more. That is correct. And we're going to start at the top and work our way down. The second thing is the pink garnet slab and here the pink garnet slab, which is going to be a slab block, which only requires the abstract settings right here. That's all fine. Then we get the button. So we got the pink garnet button and the pink garnet button here as well, which is going to be a, can you guess it, a button block with its first parameter being a block set type, in this case iron, then a then an integer, which is going to be how many ticks this stays pressed for. Let's do something crazy and do two. In, a, in another tutorial on, I think in Forge, I did one. One did not quite work out the way that I expected to, but two should be okay. And then here, we also want to call for the button, the no collision over here. This is quite important because a button actually does not have any collision. So, you know, that's why we call it basically. And then we get to the pressure plate. So this is the pink underscore garnet underscore pressure underscore plate. Quite a long name, but it does describe what it is very well. And it is a pressure plate block here. Once again, as the first parameter, a block set type. So block set type iron. Then this should also act as iron, by the way. You can, of course, change a, change the block set type to something else. Highly recommended to also go into the different methods over here and just, or rather classes, and just take a look at what they offer you in terms of methods to override or change, anything like that. The pink garnet underscore fence is the next one. And then we have the fence right here as well. And this is going to be a fence block over here. There we go with only one parameter. And that is going to be the abstract settings. Then we have the fence gate, which is going to be the pink underscore garnet underscore fence underscore gate. And same here, fence underscore gate. And this is going to be the fence gate block. There we go, which actually has as its first parameter a wood type. I'm going to say wood type dot acacia. The reason why this is the case is because all fence gates are wooden that exist in vanilla. And I guess that just means that every one of them has a wood type. It doesn't really change anything. So you can literally just put in the acacia right here and you're good to go. When it comes to the next one, we have the wall. So this is going to be the pink underscore garnet underscore wall. And here the same thing goes. And this is going to be the wall block, which only also has the abstract block settings. And that is it. And then we get to the two crazy guys over here. That's going to be the door. So this is the pink underscore garnet underscore door. And of course, once again, don't forget to change the name over here. We've copied over a lot of stuff. This is going to be a door block with its first parameter being, once again, a block set type. We're going to choose iron again. And then here it is extremely important that we call the non-opaque method. This one right here, extremely important. The same thing goes for the next one, which is going to be the trap door. I'll explain why this is important in a second. Let's just add the trap door and then we'll see trap door. There we go. But this is a trap door block with the first parameter being also the block set type. So there's going to be the block set type of iron. And here, once again, we want to call the non-opaque method. Very, very important. And the reason why we want to call this is 
the door and the trap door both have in their texture pixels that are see-through and basically completely see-through and that is why we need the non-opaque otherwise we're literally going to make a x-ray mod which is usually not something that you want to do and then we want to go to the item groups and add all of this to the item group well there's going to be quite a few of them uh, there might be too many but maybe i did a landing on exactly how many we need i don't know though button and then we have the pressure plate it's definitely gonna be too many then we're gonna have the fence we're gonna have the fence gate nope this is gonna be the fence gate over here gate please yes mm -hmm. okay there you go that's what well, how did it get trapped or from gate <laughs> that's the gate that's the wall that is the door and then we got the trap door we went one too many but that's gonna be okay and there we go we have those added to the creative mode tab and then let's actually move down to the translation the textures those are actually pretty easy i mean the translation th that should be nothing too crazy and when it comes to the textures there are actually very few textures that we need we need a door bottom and a door top as well as the trap door texture over here in the block folder and then we also have one item texture over here and that's going to be the door because the door crazily enough actually has a different texture in its inventory and that is it so that's going to be the assets done and then we get to the reason why we added all of this like to the data gen because huh, now you'll see well first of all start with the block tax this is actually extremely important if you add fences fence gates and walls for the fences to connect to each other you need to add the fence to the proper tag so here get or create tag builder block tags dot fences add mod blocks dot this is going to be the fence over here pink garnet fence then we need to do the same thing for block tags dot fence gates this is not like actually necessary however i do like to do it because well we do have the fence gate over here so that's fair and then the other one that is like absolutely required again is going to be the walls tag where we add our custom wall mod blocks dot pink garnet wall over here there you go if you do not add it to the fences the fence then it will not connect to each other and also not to connect to any other fences if it's added to the fences tag it will connect to the nether brick fence if you want it to be acting like a wooden fence you want to add it to the wooden fences over here and then it will actually connect to the wooden fences. There is no way disabling it to connecting to any of those fences in itself. So that is just going to be a thing. Same thing with the wall, obviously. But right? if you have this wall, then if and if you don't add it to the block tag, then it will literally just not connect to each other as well. Then we can move on to the loot table provider. Extremely easy. This is crazy because most of them, they just drop themselves. So we have mod blocks, mod blocks. And what well, would be nice to write it correctly. Mod blocks start stairs over here. And then we're actually going to duplicate this a couple of times. And then we're going to skip over the slab for just a moment. Because that's going to be one of the ones that is going to have a special thing. And I'll explain why in a second. We have a wall. We have a fence. We have a fence gate over here. And then we have the trap door. And we're going to need the door over here. So the door and the slab are the two things that are important. Let's see the slab first. Second parameter over here slab drops so this is the slab drops method passing in mod blocks dot pink garnet slab that's it for the door same thing door drops here in this case mod blocks dot pink garnet door why do those require specific ones well if you have one slab you want one slab to drop right if, whether or not it's on the bottom or the top however if you have two slabs in one block you want both of them to drop therefore we need a specific different type of well dropping mechanism same thing with a door. A door, if you remember, is actually two blocks in one. You set down the door and it's actually, it actually occupies the space of two blocks. So if we don't add the door block drop over here, then you literally get two doors back f every time you break one, which obviously is not quite expected. And then we go to the models, which is going to be quite interesting. Here we actually need to do a tiny change over here for the pink garnet block because all of our blocks, they, well, basically they use the pink garnet as their base line or their base model their base texture that's why we didn't need to add any different textures so this is actually going to be a block state model generator dot block texture pool we're going to call this the pink garnet pool equal to this and instead of the simple cube overhaul here we're going to register the cube all model texture pool and that's literally the change over here and then we can use this pool Call this and literally just call stairs passing in mod blocks dot stairs 
And we can do this a couple of times. So we can then call the slabs over here. Of course, changing this to the slab, extremely important. Like double check this, right? Stairs, stairs, slab, slab, right? We continue. We say button, obviously, this changes to button, right? And uh, I know that you might be like, oh, I'm never, this is not going to happen to me. It happens to everyone. <laughs> it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, I, I will make sure to make this correct. And then always double check. That's going to be the best thing, right? So fence, fence, fence gate, actually. And then here we got the wall. And of course, changing it to fence, fence gate, and to the wall. There we go. And then the other two, so the door and the trap door, those actually once again work with the block state model generator, where we call the register door method, passing in mod blocks dot pink garnet door. And then we can duplicate this and call the register trap door method, and here pass in the trap door. As always, as I've previously said, all of the code is also available down below, so you're good to go. And with that, we have almost everything done except for the recipes where I believe, if I recall correctly, you can see create door recipe. So you literally have everything you would need for this, right? So, I mean, we could go down. I don't know what to tell you. Literally just, this should be fairly straightforward. Now, when you have a create over here, right, with the JSON builder, then you will still need to add the criterion and the offer too, right? So this is quite important. You can see that when you have this create over here, you put in the, the output and the input, but you still have to offer it and make a criteria. There might be a slab, for example, right? The offer slab recipe, that one automatically creates the slab, right? So this is the only difference over here, right? So that's the general idea when it comes to the recipes, but that is basically it. And I think this is everything we need for our non-block blocks, as crazy as it sounds. So let's actually run the data gen over here. And then you will see the reason why this one, this particular line, this one line, right? Pink garnet pool dot button, mod blocks, pink garnet button. Why this particular line is so powerful when you see the block states JSON file for the button. And you will know, Kaupman Joe, you are absolutely right. Data gen is the best invention since sliced bread. So first of all, we have 62 JSON files written. Now I go into the block states. The pink garnet button. And look at this monstrosity. Okay. This is what you would have to deal with manually if you wanted to add this. Now, obviously, right? Control A, Control C, Control V, uh, like mark, Control R, change it. Absolutely. I'm with you. If you have to do this 20 times, nah. Nah. Fam, I'm telling you, this makes more sense. Duplicate, get the other button in here. It generates this. And it's not only the block states, JSON file, by the way. There's also multiple different block model JSON files for all of them. Look at this. The door has eight of them. The fences have like multiple ones. It's absolutely nuts. This is why I'm saying block like the data generation. Oh, what a freaking great system. And it's so simple, right? It's so simple. Like it's super easy. And there you go. That is going to be everything we're going to need. So now let's just jump into the game and see if all of them work. All right, fans, it's back in Minecraft, and let's take a look, and there we freaking go. We have everything that we expect to see, and ah, there is one more thing. Of course, there could be, there could be no other, but there is one more thing, but we we're gonna fix that in just a second. So basically, though, every single other thing, as you can see, has been successfully added. We got the slabs, we got the, the buttons over here and they work for two ticks right which is going to be an interesting one that could be interesting for the redstoners among you and we have the fence which once again like i said it is connecting to each other right and the wall here also works we can even put in the fence gate between the walls and if i get another wall over here i believe that that should connect to it as well as when i get the nether brick fence this is going to connect to this fence, as you can see, right? And the other wall should connect to the this wall as well, because they all share the same tag. And if I were to get a wooden fence, though, you can see that does not connect to each other because they are different tags. That's the whole idea. And now here you can see uh, this is not see-through, right? And this is also not see-through, which, of course, it should be, right? There isn't just like a white blob in here. So that we still have to fix. Let's take a look. And now we can do that. It's actually very simple, and that is by going to the tutorial mod client class here. We simply want to call the render layer map dot instance, passing in the put block or calling the put block method mod blocks dot. We're gonna use the door and then pass in the render layer dot get cutout. I'm gonna do the same thing for the trap door. 
And just with that, the door and the drop door finally are, well, see-through in the sense that, you know, you can see through and look through the window of it. Absolutely fantastic. And there you go. That is custom non-block blocks added to Minecraft. Awesome. As I've said now multiple times, all of the code is, of course, available to you down below in the GitHub repository. But that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. And next time in this, and next time in this video, we'll talk about block states. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.